question is that the land is zoned public open space, both these spaces, and any change, whether it's directed or promised, must go through the current land use change process, and that would include requirement to take advice from the Community Advisory Council. We have tried uh, over the last months to obtain as much information as we can uh, about the provinces, what the province is doing, both with Pacific Spirit Park and with the golf course. In fact, we were very lucky. We actually got a mean meeting with the Premier, which we didn't think we would ever get, but that did happen, and a letter to our, one of our residents recently. The best we have been able to determine is that the government believes that it has to accommodate, quote, the Musqueam by giving the golf course to them and likely providing them with some land in Pacific Spirit Park. Um, from the comments that were made by the Premier and letters we've received from him and from the Minister of Aboriginal Affairs, the province seems to be mixing up some separate, a number of separate concepts, and we feel these are important enough to bring them to your attention. One was mentioned earlier, and I think it was by Dave, uh, there are no treaty talks ongoing. So any land transfer that we're talking, to, talking about now is neither in satisfaction of treaty obligations, nor is it what might be called an interim measure, which would be, say, the equivalent of a down payment on treaty obligations. Secondly, the province's, quote, accommodation, which they are required to make through the court order of the claim of the Musqueam on the transfer of the golf course to UBC, their accommodation seems to be to take it back from UBC and give it to the Musqueam. This is not accommodation. This is a gift. Arguably, it might be beyond our role to comment on the province's wish to do this, to make this gift, but by confusing accommodation with gifting, we feel that we have an obligation to assist the public in understanding that by the government confusing this issue, whether innocently or not, this will likely lead to conflict in future about changes in land use, and that's what we're concerned about. Uh, our council does not and would not object to a change in ownership of the golf course, but we don't want to see any promises attached to the change in ownership which suggest a land change use, a change in land use will follow. Our latest official community plan was issued in 2005. Interestingly, it was approved by this provincial government just in 2005, which was after the transfer of the golf course. It was the fruit of three years of extensive public consultation. It's really a ground, grassroots document. And it addresses land use and specifies that the existing green space in the UEL, including specifically the golf course and Pacific Spirit Park in its entirety, shall remain green. So for what that's worth, I thought that may be of interest. Um, the other thing I just want to comment briefly on is save the park and save the course. The way things are going, save the park people seem to be coming pitted against save the course golf, save the golf course people. Our opinion is that we should all work together. This is about both, and I think it's particularly in light of what we've heard tonight. Uh, there is certainly no clear information about what it, how many acres of the park, if any, will be given to the Musqueam as an interim accommodation, in addition to the golf course. But both will eventually mean significant change on the Point Grey Peninsula without due process. A letter that was received just recently by a UEL resident from Gordon Campbell, quote, said, not to allow them, meaning the Musqueam, to consider what they could do if they acquire more land is unfair. All residents, we feel, need to work together. We need to let the Premier know that making any changes in land use possible in our neighbourhood without proper consultation is just adding one wrong to another. Thank you.